and live. Good afternoon, my name is Lucy James. I'm one of the organizers of DroidCon Italy and I'm very glad to be here with Andre from Babylon Health who's presenting today's webinar. Hi Andre. Uh, hi everyone, uh, <laughs> my name is Andre. Uh, I work at Babylon Health right now and today I'm going to share my experience on building a messenger and uh, how I see it today for uh, Android and mobile in general. Brilliant. Thank you very much for uh, for taking the time to play your webinar for us, Andre. Um, this webinar is brought to you by Synesthesia. It is powered by AWS Amplify. And Andre is going to be with us for Q&A at the end. Post your questions in the YouTube comments bar. Um, Andre, have a great webinar. Thank you. All right, let's start. So, uh, this story happened about a year ago, and today we, we're gonna we gonna go through uh, the story on why why we've built a messenger and tech stack for it. We are gonna look through different uh, transport uh, to to. Or organize a messenger, then we will look a bit more on Android architecture, some performance tips, and learnings that we've got from this project. So, a couple of years ago, we launched our our application at Lawful and um, uh, Messenger was a part of our experience. Basically, this is a C2C marketplace where you buy and sell things. And uh, uh, this is uh, what, what we wanted to have. Uh, we, we wanted to, to build Messenger because many of our users were leaving our application uh, for WhatsApp and other types of messengers and they were lacking many features. So we decided, uh, well, let's build a better uh, messenger within a wrap so uh, our users won't leave it. Uh, now, if we look at this couple of screens, it seems like pretty, pretty mild, just uh, one list of charts and uh, another list of messages within the chat. But if we start looking closer at it, we will see that uh, there is so many features which are encapsulated within it. So there is a uh, real-time sound delivery and uh, image and file sending. Uh, there is delivery statuses and typing uh, indicator. Uh, online status, origination, possibility to send the message offline, deleting, possibility to delete chat, blacklist user, different types of chats, uh, search within this messenger experience, and chat with our bot using, using it. So these features, they are like a snowball. They, there is, there is the most more of them, and there is also possibility to automate responses and, and things like that. So these two tiny screens hide a lot of functionality, which it seems to be simple at the beginning. Uh, and our sort of role model was a telegram. We wanted to be something as good as it, and that were what we aimed for. So, but for for every business is is uh, it might be different. So, for someone, for 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 for, for the telegram, I guess there was uh, the 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 speed was one of the, the crucial. Things because it is a the messenger app is something that user opens every day, and the speed is super important there. And but for us, there was also a web client uh, because we had our experience also on the web, 
Um, security is another thing which might be important. And all these different features uh, where we want to share our recordings, images, videos, different sorts of files, uh, they all add up and doesn't mean that we need to, to, to add them all, but we need to, to look at them. So when we look at the Telegram code base, we were blown away. It's almost half a million lines of code, more than half a million lines of code. And we didn't really want it to, to invest that amount of effort. So for, for everyone, it, it might be different in terms of how much time we have to deliver that and how much money and engineers we already have in the team to make that happen. So in our case, we, we started doing it in, in, in two months, but in reality it took us uh, about six six months, but that was one engineer on, on, on the mobile side and one engineer on the front end and, and one engineer on the back end side. That, that was the setup. And so for all these cases, uh, there is a different uh, stacks we can choose. And uh, that depends. If you want a really fast messenger, you want to choose one thing or another. So there is all these different opportunities. So uh, I've just outlined uh, some of them uh, for uh, as a backend stack. There is way more of them, but some of the very like noticeable is the Firebase, PubNub, Socket.io. GraphQL. So these are technologies on top of which we can build a chat experience. And apart from this, uh, there is a, also there are different platforms we can use. So we can use purely native Android and iOS. Uh, we can use a Flutter. Is React Native, and we might also optionally choose a storage uh, as a skill around. For example, there is many more of them, but the main the main point here is that we would want to choose one of them depending on on our specific use case. So, well, if you want to build really fast experience really fast messenger you would go with something like a native platform as android and iOS and that would be one thing and if you want to be offline we will we will, we will have uh, storage as well and a little bit more in depth regarding a backend and transport so uh, there is a really a lot of ways to do it so they start with uh, with low low level options as fully implementing support for web sockets for uh, Android platform, for example, and and Fab and iOS. Uh, there is also options like do long polling or HTTP streaming and. The problem with that is uh, it's uh, it's easier to do this if we have a lot of engineers already in the team and a lot of resources, and it a lot takes a lot, it takes a lot of time to, to build that. Uh, and the the another option might be to use uh, some sort of pre-built framework like. Uh, Library like a socket IR to, to which which already has a fallbacks and wrappers for for web clients and it has some retry logic for native platforms. So it already gives some sort of it handles some edge cases for us and there is some community there and it makes it makes it much easier. 
so the, the more money we have, we can move a little bit further. So we can we can use a platforms like uh, PubNub or Firebase, which is handle the backend for us. So we provide really great uh, SDKs where we will we can integrate. So they will provide a database on a, on, on a mobile and they will provide the flat storage and synchronization of messages uh, and all that stuff. The caveat here is uh, that once the application starts growing uh, and there will be more users, we will, we will have to pay for that functionality. And that really depends. In, in, there is additional cost there. And, uh, this is something to keep in mind, but it might be completely a good option to to, to use for a startup, for example. Uh, the, the, the more we move to the right, there is fully fledged solutions for chat experience like Zen desks, which, which provide UI and we actually do use Zendesk in our app, we did use it in, in a lot of and uh, uh, we used it for support needs, and it, uh, it it's a it's a good tool for that because we didn't want to build the whole this chat ex separate chat ex experience for for Zendesk for support. We didn't need that, so Zendesk was enough in that case. But of course, uh, in that regard, when they Create the UI uh, UI uh, SDKs with the charts. There is there is uh, the more there is the less flexibility. So the, the more the more we move to the right, there is also less flexibility here in terms of um, uh, making creating some extra features and some custom features. So. That's uh, on uh, different backend and transport options. And technically speaking, we can use uh, any backend transport with any platform and with any storage displayed here. So we can just pick and choose depending on what sort of engineers we have in our team, which sort of needs we have, does it need to be performance or not, and depending on it, we can, can choose a uh, different stack of technologies. In our case, we went with uh, native, as I said, we, we, are, uh, we are, we were aiming for a fast experience, as well as we have a lot of users in, a, in a Asia markets and other emerging markets where there is uh, a lot of devices. So at the time we were building this, there was a lot of devices which were basically Android 4 devices. So let's get more maybe into detail uh, in terms of transport. Uh, so there is different ways to implement it and we, we, we're gonna walk through some maybe but uh, more into our story how we did it but discuss some options here uh, so one of them is just uh, having a basic http calls and uh, you know, querying uh, querying these chats microservice each time every with a timeout every 10 seconds for example so the, the problem is here is that we will ask each each client will will ask if there is anything new on the backend and backend in this case each client is a soldier and backend is a general backend will answer no each time <laughs> and that would lead to a lot of waste of resources because uh, every client will ask as well as uh, backend. Uh, we need to answer that there is nothing happening. So uh, this is problematic, especially when there is a tons of messages and so on. And this is not really real time. 
So another way to go is to combine this techno technology with um, approach with the file-based cloud messages. And once we basically, we still send in the request uh, on uh, our chat microservice, uh, I've got a new messages, but once, once there is a new message from a client too, we, our chat microservice will send uh, this uh, notification to our client one and then we will request more messages. Uh, we still use HTTP here, which is uh, which is not that great. That would mean we will all, always need to query for all those messages. Even, we, even if we got just one message, we are still going to query for all of them. And it's a little bit wasteful um, here. So much better approach would be to while we are in the app is to that our chat microservice will send messages to us. So we won't ask him about messages, but he will send us messages. And that would be this uh, bidirectional transport. And so anytime client two send a message, uh, but our chat service will automatically send a message to client one that we receive that. Uh, there is a several caveats with this. Uh, and in our case, uh, so we were using socket IO, but I think with, with any bidirectional transport service, there is a similar caveats. Uh, in Brazil, it's implemented on TCP or web sockets, it's the same problems. So once it's a, the messages comes in a mixed fashion, that would mean that uh, we will, we might uh, ask, uh, we, might, we might send messages uh, or requests in, in, in for, for in the backend, like in this order, but in the strong message too, but we will receive a completely different order back. And that creates a question on how are we going to handle this? But there is quite easy, easy approach here uh, to do that. Let's see. Uh, uh, basic, basically, in this case, it would be uh, using uh, some sort of ID for that. But yeah, there is many different uh, protocols uh, which are directional cloud messaging protocols. And uh, there is one for Telegram as well, I believe, and different for Skype and, and other ones. So you can pick and choose from them as well. And if they are open, if they open source, you you might want to use them. But of course, there is some complexity there. And in our case, we, as, as I said, we were using socket IO because of the web client, and it's it's relatively fast and it handles Reconnex for us, as I said. So it, it's quite good. Uh, the only caveat here is that it's got a lot of issues on, on the channel library for Android, so it's got 295 issues. And the last, the last uh, pull request was merged like more than a year ago. The service is, wasn't happening much here. But we decided that we will take take responsibility on it, and we can we can handle all the issues, which is which will appear there. That's cool. So, uh, as I said, uh, with uh, with the with the direction of transport, there is uh, there are always uh, similar roadblocks. And one of them is that the messages uh, coming in a in different order. Uh, another one is 
So, so to, to handle that, we, we, can, we can use this acknowledgement ID. Um, we just can rely on this ID to check if the messages have, have come in, 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 the, in, in the proper order. So we can differentiate. The last thing that it will provide us is uh, with this acknowledgement, we can notify that uh, we, we can basically send a delivery receipt. So we can notify a backend regarding that the message has been delivered. And then another user will get this acknowledgement receipt. Uh, one of the other problems here is that you see if the user has many devices, and the same user basically. Uh, we need the what what would happen is that you will receive the same notification on the device, and that will cause the device uh, jumping around, and the rest will be duplicate basically uh, within within the list. So uh, to to avoid those duplicates. Uh, we can we can add some uh, identifier in our case socket ID, and we can look if what, what's this uh, socket ID uh, of the sender and check if it's if it's similar or different. And then uh, based on this, we can differentiate if if we need to add this message to the list. Because basically, what's happening is that we are always listening for, for new messages from the backend. And uh, in this case, once, once we receive them, we, we need to find a way to differentiate. Um, another problem is that uh, our users may be located in different time zones. And uh, we need to find a way to sync time with them. Our, another thing might be that our device got offline and there is also some problems with time as well. So one of the options would be is to just to timestamp uh, with uh, every message with a backend and backend time. So backend will timestamp all the messages. And to avoid any junk in our message list, we can always check if this new message we are sending that the time of it is is less than last last message time. So if if we're in the different time zones, we can check that, and then there is not any chunk. So it's uh, uh, won't be a situation when the message because of the different time zone will be somewhere in the middle of the list, which will create this uh, jump within the message list. Um, so that one approach. Another approach would be is to call for a uh, for time from the back end every, I don't know, whatever, 30 seconds, call uh, for delta time with the back end. And then uh, update the delta with the local time. That, that should also help us resolve this issue. Uh, now going to the to the platform and to the Android, we, there is several concerns here. So one of them is battery. Uh, so we would want to save as much battery as possible. We would want to. Uh, be as a Facebook Messenger, for example, in this case. So, um, what we want to do, we want to disconnect our uh, socket client, in our case, socket AI, when the app goes uh, into background. So, what's happening here is that our 
uh, are keeping the socket connection is quite expensive and it, it consumes a lot of battery and uh, we want to only use it when the app is in the foreground and once the app in the background we, we want to disconnect from it so in this case we just uh, add this uh, call back to our process lifecycle owner, which is on the app lifecycle, and we will only connect the circuit client when it, uh, on the in, in the foreground and this can happen mm -hmm. in the background. Uh, so that's regarding battery. Another thing is optimization. We definitely the more on uh, our app is uh, to we don't want to receive the messages once we logged out of the of the our user. So we we will need to have a a way to uh, no connect and disconnect once user logged in and logged out. And we need to register this uh, callback. Uh, that's another thing to, to take into account. And uh, there is also, we would also want to connect our client once we receive our base cloud message. We will uh, receive a new notification. That would be another one. So you may look at this and think, wait, wait a minute. So there's, there's quite a few, few contact going on here and there. And there's spread across the whole application. And this, this, this makes it really hard to test uh, this logic and making sure that we connect and disconnect in time. It's, it's hard to, uh, to, to understand how it goes and looking into all those, because these callbacks, they are, they will be called in a different point in time, all of them, which creates all this really really messy situation and apart from this we also will need to handle reconnect so if there is no network we will need to reconnect our client hopefully socket will do this for us but what could we do to to avoid those callbacks so one option is uh, using this using um, state machines so that would mean that uh, we will call this we will describe all the situation in our state machine and this will be only one place where the all uh, possible states uh, for our socket connection will be handled so Oh, these are the possible states. So the one we talked before when I've started, the foreground, background, locked in, reconnect and disconnected our new message received. So this is basically all the states we have yeah, here. Yeah. And uh, this is quite cool because uh, now in our problems, we can just uh, Call this state machine with this specific state. And in our state machine, uh, we can handle it as we want. And uh, we can connect this command. We can also sync some counters, some many, any other extra logic, because as I showed you in the beginning, there is a lot of a lot of things going on, there is a lot of features. Uh, and this is just a couple of lines of code, but in reality there is way more things. And, and it's it's way more convenient to keep them in this one area, and it's way easier to test, because we just can put it to state and just to check if proper things are called. And it, 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 it way to, it, it simplifies our logic a lot on, on managing these uh, socket connections. So we looked it up in a, in a, in a Scarlet library. We're using state machines there. 
So this is something you might look. They use, uh, I, think, I believe they use web sockets there. Uh, and you can look at the client. We didn't need everything they have, but this approach with state machines is definitely, definitely a really good one. And I encourage you to, to use them within this uh, socket connection management. So uh, there is a lot of features as you see, and uh, as you could guess, they do intertwine between each other from time to time. And to keep our engineers sane, we need a proper architecture to, to, to compose them and to just being able to have new features. Because once we release our uh, messenger, the new message of the last like two months we will add new features and you know, the list of them is growing all the time because it's a uh, really dynamic area. So we were sticking to clean architecture with this dependency rule. I guess you are familiar with this. So we would have our entities use cases uh, and uh, controllers. So in our case, it was, look, it was looking more like that. So we would have for each feature of our uh, messenger, we would have a specific package uh, and a specific operation class. So we would have child operations to any, uh, in any uh, functionality or with charts, we have the specific typing operations for typing features and message block user and all those were different operations. So uh, our, uh, all the parts as, as we were talked through uh, government transport, this being circuit the world, we had they being abstracted with a iMessenger client and, and, and the state machines for that. Uh, but there is other things which are present here, as a Windows in some ways, we still use an API database to store these messages, deep links, and fabulous kind of messages. And, and uh, working with them is quite easy with these abstractions. The only hard part here is, uh, which is left, is, is a presenter and UI. So a presenter and UI is, is, is uh, was a historically quite uh, complicated area. And we were using MVP before, but in our previous implementation, we found out that it's not, it's not really a good solution. So uh, especially when there is a, many similar actions from the model triggers the same method for view. So sometimes it might be unclear what the view should do because uh, all these granular streams of data, it's, it's not clear really how to combine them. And this becomes even more complicated if we have some other functionality like login, logout, language changes, and so on. So, so this becomes really messy this time. Um, yeah, this, this is displays only MVP, but it's the same issue applies for um, for MVVM. If we have many streams, it might be hard sometimes to combine them and display something meaningful on our screen. So the Hannes Dorfman was talking about VI and he, he, he got this uh, the problem, uh, the guy, he got this animation on and basically when there is a row but at the same time a progress bar is showing so this state is inconsistent and uh, we just need to show row in this case. So, in, in, in the complex screens as a messenger, where there is a lot of uh, features in the client, uh, another good technique would be to use a state machine, an um, MDI approach or MDI approach. So uh, instead of uh, 
figuring out which which action we should trigger and view, we we will leave this responsibility for our user. So um, basically, what would happen is that if item selected, you will propagate. In our case, what we did is that we propagated the selection to presenter, and presenter. Uh, uh, propagated to the reducer and side effects and then uh, side effects uh, reduce specific action back to reducer. So, and reducer will reduce a state with uh, accounting for the previous state. So, it's creates some sort of loop here basically. And, um, once there is a new different state here appeared, we will, we will uh, emit it to presenter. The presenter will call specific methods for view that will be rendered. Uh, so basically, what happens here is that we, we are able to uh, put our representation of our on state and reduce it. Uh, so this reduction is basically the place where we avoid we avoid this problem. So uh, there is many libraries out there, and I'm working now with Babylon, and the uh, Matt Dolan and Nikolai uh, they wrote the, the library called Orbit, uh, and it was it was looking to it. Uh, it basically provides all this uh, state machine functionalities and implements in the AI pattern and solves this issue. There is also alternative as well as Maverix and Rx Redux. You can use uh, all of them. Choose whatever you like. I personally would stick to Orbit. It's quite up to date and it uses coroutines and with a boot and uh, it's a really great library. Uh, but you can choose depending on your specific situation. The main thing here is uh, that chat requires something bigger than MVP and MVVM. We need to have to store our state here somewhere and be able to reduce it because there is a lot of features there. Uh, another thing which is crucial here is a performance. And one of the tricks is specifically related to MVI is avoid unnecessary renders of chat's messages list. So uh, that would mean that only render list when it's necessary because there will be tons of messages in the list and all these renders, they create junk, especially in long run devices. So try to render as well as possible. Another thing is uh, using thread hierarchy. So uh, that would mean that uh, in our specific case, we use using uh, primitives. So we don't use image view, we use throwable and we use canvas and on top of canvas we draw these drawable images and instead of text view we use layout to 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 to, to, to represent text and this is a low level primitive this allows us to to achieve way more performance uh, i'm not sure if is it so important nowadays but you know uh, if, if, if you want it to be as, as best as Telegram or Messenger, you want to have a flat view hierarchy in your uh, complicated lists. So you can see in, in, in the term, uh, Messenger and use it for flat view hierarchy approach as well. So that's something you might consider. Another thing to worry is the starter time. So, uh, Android has this uh, callback, uh, which is uh, 
being called. So, so exactly what happens here is that uh, sometimes before we used to create our um, some of our dependencies and um, connections and initializations, we were just doing and create of the app. But that would lead uh, that would postpone the startup time, and uh, this is not good, uh, especially for everyday. Uh, application as messenger. So one approach here would be is to uh, initialize and start components, in our case, uh, socket connection and socket message handler only when uh, every uh, the first screen is rendered and the looper queue is free basically and, and uh, only then call all initializations. So this for improve startup time significantly if you have a lot of components of dependency injections there this, this will really help so uh, i showed you many of the technique today and with those you can you can build a beautiful messenger as beautiful as this this bridge was the ground bridge but if you knowing that you can build that messenger doesn't mean you should. So try to account into your business needs, uh, what exactly you need in your specific case, and uh, looking at your resources, and then decide uh, what, what technology to use, um, which, which optimizations you need or not, and use the right tool. Use the right tool for each, each specific case. Um, maybe you don't need those like you are a kid, but you know, look, look into it. Being aware is good, uh, and try to try to make a fair estimate. Maybe uh, for now, case it took six months, but maybe if we had some discussions with uh, with some experts, we might be able to envision that. But yeah, try to do fair estimates and design for flexibility because uh, Messenger is a really evolving project and there are a lot of new features coming all the time. So there is a lot of things we need those two small screens, but of course, uh, in flexibility in this case. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, bonus. So basically, that's it. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I can't see that there are any questions in the chat bar at this time, which means I'm sure that everyone is taking the material in and thinking carefully okay. about what they want to ask you. Um, I'm sure if anyone has any questions, they can follow up with you afterwards. Um, so thank you again for taking the time to prepare this presentation and share your webinar with us. Sure. I'm uh, happy to, to do that. Thank you. Um, that just leaves me to once again thank our sponsor for this webinar, AWS Amplify. Um, this webinar was brought to you by Synesthesia, who also produced the Droidcom Italy conference, newly relaunched for 27th and 28th of November, all digital, all online. So hopefully see you at that event as well, Andre. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Have a nice rest of the day. Bye -bye.